guys. Welcome back to the Church of Preaching 2. Let's go. <laughs> we have been doing a series called Built Different. We've heard a lot of great messages uh, out of 1 Peter, a lot of messages about suffering. Uh, so, man, really encouraging, right? Let's go. Uh, today, we're going to focus on the same series, Built Different, but the title of my message is actually Live Different. So don't just be built different, but live different. And so I'll be preaching out of First Peter chapter five, verses five through nine. Okay. So I'll let you get there. Uh, I'll give you two seconds. One, two, and there we go. Now we're at First Peter chapter five, five verse through nine. Sorry, uh, and I'll read it for you. Likewise, you who are younger, be subject to the elders. Clothe yourselves, all of you, with humility toward one another. For good, God opposes the proud, but gives grace to the humble. Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, so that at the proper time he may exalt you, casting all your anxieties on him, because he cares for you. Yeah. Be sober-minded, be watchful. Your adversary, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion, seeking someone to devour. Resist him. Everyone say resist him. Resist, resist him. him. Firm in your faith, knowing that the same kinds of suffering are being experienced by your brotherhood throughout the world. Wow, that's a really encouraging last verse. Resist him firm in your faith, knowing that the same kinds of suffering are being experienced by your brotherhood around throughout the world. So in First Peter, Peter's kind of talking to five different churches, and he's, uh, you know, he's kind of encouraging them. They're going through persecution. And right here he gives us some pretty applicable steps to live our life. And the first one is clothe yourself with humility. Clothe yourself with humility. Do you want to know one of God's least favorite things? One of God's least favorite things. I want to take a... Jonathan, do you know what God's least favorite thing is? One of God's least favorite Someone things. Someone who is pride. 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 He hit it right on the head. Pride is one of God's least favorite things. And the opposite of pride is humility. Peter began this word of humility to younger people. And in contrast to the elders that he had just addressed earlier on in 1 Peter chapter 5. That Daniel took care of uh, last sermon. Uh, last Sunday. <laughs> so he took care of that. But then he soon realized it is the application to all of you to all of you, young and old, class and Dr. Ely. I'm just kidding. <laughs> this word is to be submissive to one another and be clothed with humility. And it applies to everyone. Clothe yourself with humility. Humility is demonstrated by submission. So it's important that we realize that humility is demonstrated with an action. You can't just call yourself humility and not take action on it. It is the ability to cheerfully put away our own agenda for God's. Yes, all of you, and it means all of you, even young and old, strive to serve each other. You can't just serve God. You have to serve God and serve each other. Be clothed with humility. The phrase be clothed translate, translates a rare word that referred to a slave that was putting on an apron to work to be before serving. And even as Jesus did before washing his disciples' feet. His feet, their feet, sorry. We have all had a feeling once of uh, being prideful and then quickly punched in the face by humility, right? I can give you an example. One time in uh, high school, I was playing basketball and uh, I wasn't quite the best person on my team but there was one game, I got a little bit of minutes, and uh, coach put me in. I mean, it was, it was, you know, the game was already over. But he put me in, I started making shots. Boom, three, in your face, bow. Another three, boom, in your face, bow. I'm like, okay, like, let's go. I'm hitting shots. This is, now this is not regular for me, all right? <laughs> so I started hitting shots. And then I start, you know, getting a little cocky saying a little few things that I shouldn't have. <laughs> and uh, then quickly, I go down, try to shoot a three, air ball, boom. 
and then quickly hit in the face with humility. <laughs> I preached a similar message on humility before, and I, I related it to a rubber band. When, you, when you're so prideful, and you, you're, you're, you're just continuing in this pride, and you're stretching this, this rubber band, and eventually you will, it will pop. Eventually it will. But it's up to you to determine how much of a sting it creates. How long are you going to go on being prideful? Because I can tell you this, the longer you go, the harder it's going to hit. The harder humility is going to hit. For God resists the proud, but gives grace to the humble. So there we see there's a blessing in being humble. Grace and pride are eternal enemies. If you want to be in constant battle with God, just go ahead and be prideful. How many of you guys want to be in constant uh, battle with the one creator of the universe? I don't think I do. I mean, you're quickly going to lose that fight. I can tell you that right now. Grace deals with me on the basis of what is in God, not on the basis of anything in me. So it's nothing that, you know, that I've done to deserve anything. It's more of what's in God. Number two, he tells us, casting all our anxieties on him because he cares for you. So two, cast your cares to God. Cast your cares to God. I think there's a reason Peter puts these things in specific order. Because you can't do step two without step one. All right? So true humility is shown by your ability to cast our care upon God. It is a proud presumption to take things into our own worry and care about things that God has promised already to take care of. If we do the command of 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 6, and truly humble ourselves under the mighty hand of God, we would have far fewer cares to cast upon Him. Now, let's, let's read that again, okay? If we do the command of chapter of verse 6 yeah. then it's going to be way easier and we'll be doing things the right way casting our cares the right way onto God so what does that mean if you are not first humbling yourselves your prayers are going to look like this God I'll, I don't have all the money in the world I need I need all the money in the world I don't have all the likes on Instagram uh, you know I need that God like but if you first do the first act the first step which is be humble, then you can do it the second step a lot easier and the right way. Yeah. That's good. If we would do the command of 1 Peter chapter 5 or 6, it will be way easier for us. Uh, and I can put it in another way for you. Say if a man comes in and uh, I just call him on the phone, hey dude, I need you to come pick up this table right here for me. I need you to come pick up this table right here for me. And he comes in with a bunch of bags, a bunch of bags filled with weight. And he comes in with his, his legs filled with like, you know those, uh, the training, the training boots that you run around with to make it harder on yourself to train? <laughs> he, he's, he has those on, so he's, he's coming in with all this, all these bags full of weight, just coming around. And he comes over to the table, and it's already a heavy table, and he tries to pick it up and he can't, and it makes it so much harder for him to do that. And he's complaining to me because that is heavy, but dude, you have all this baggage on you in the first place. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So take care of step one so that you can stay, take care of step two way easier. In the same way, we cannot do God's work when we are weighed down by our own burdens and worries. Cast them upon him, take up the Lord's burden, which is light. Number three, what it tells us to do is to stay alert. Be watchful for the devil. Uh, I can't tell you how important this is because you can just get lulled to sleep and he can attack at any moment. Verse 8 says, Be sober-minded, be watchful. Your adversary, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion seeking someone to devour. Seeking someone to devour. This is important because we can do step one, step two, but then get quickly took out of the picture by step three if we're not alert. Uh, there's this funny story, kind of funny, but also kind of sad. So bear with me here. Uh, there was a man in South Africa, right? 
And at, at an earlier age, he bought a pet hippo. Now, you can't do that in America. The only place you can do that is really in South Africa. So it's already a wild idea. If we were in Florida, if he was in Florida, he'd probably get a pet alligator, right? <laughs> um, but in South Africa, he, he gets his pet hippo. And we're going to call it Humphrey, OK? Humphrey the hippo, all right? So he's going around. He's uh, you know, raising this hippo as his pet. He's feeding it. And uh, you know, he's playing around. There's actually a viral video of this guy riding around on this hippo, like his pet hippo. It's kind of crazy. And he's, he's going around, and he's, he's playing with it, you know, feeding the, feeding the hippo. And then one day, he goes to this river, and him and Humphrey are having a great time. Like, dude, they're having a blast. And then all of a sudden, Humphrey drags him into the river and kills him. Drags him in into the river, devours him. The guy drowned, died, and he's devoured. Sometimes we can adopt temptation as our pet. In verse 9 it says, resist him steadfast in the faith. But here's the thing, we have to continually be alert, steadfast, and sober-minded. Don't adopt temptation because temptation will eventually devour you. Mm. He was playing around with it. You know, we can get so close to temptation and think we're, we're good. We're going to keep it around because it's fun and sweet. Like, who wouldn't want it to be around? Like, you know, like you're just playing around with it. It's sweet. It has this aroma to it. And then eventually you partake in it, and then boom, you're done. Yeah. The addiction takes over. All of these things, it devours you. Be alert out of faith, but not out of fear. For Christians, Satan is a lion who may roar, but I can tell you this. He, he has been defamed at the cross. Yet the sound of his roar is, is scary. It's alarming. But it's no match for Jesus. It's no match for Jesus. That's so good. We know Satan's goal, seeking whom he may devour. He isn't just trying to lick and, and play and, and just get a little nibble. He's trying to devour. He is trying to devour. Do not indulge the thought that the main purpose of Satan is to make you miserable. He is pleased with that, but that is not his ultimate end. Sometimes he may even make you happy. He has a sweet temptation that tastes so good that he gives to God's people. And it's to get you distracted. It's to get you walking with temptation, petting temptation, so that he can ultimately devour you. So resist him, steadfast in faith. The secret of spiritual warfare is simple. Steadfast resistance. Steadfast resistance. As we are steadfast in the faith, we resist the devil's lies and threats and intimidation. Resist comes from two ancient, ancient Greek words. Stand against. Peter tells us to stand against the devil. Satan can be set running by the resistance of even the tiniest believer who comes in the authority of what Jesus did on the cross. I just told you guys, he was defamed at the cross. He has a mighty roar that may, might seem scary, but I can tell you that Jesus is way more powerful. So if you will, bow your heads and close your eyes with me. I feel like there's a couple people in this room that, you know, maybe you feel like this doesn't relate to you because you haven't even done step zero, which is accept Jesus into your heart. And I want to tell you today, that is the greatest decision you could ever make in your entire life. And there are believers around this room that will tell you the same exact thing. It may be hard. We've heard in First Peter that it may be hard. We may, you know, go through sufferings and but it's ultimately worth it. Eternally, it's worth it. So, if you are in this room and you haven't done steps here, I, 
I want to ask if there's anyone in this room that will that will look me in the eye right now and great job, great job, great job. Now step two. We're going to apply this to our daily lives, but there's some things that we have to do. Daily remind yourself that this, that his ways are higher than mine. Number two, give God all your cares. And number three, stay faithfully alert. Uh, God, we pray right now that you will, you will help us and you will remind us every day to stay faithful to you, God. Put your ways higher than ours, God. It's a daily reminder that we have to pick up every single day. And I pray that you will give us discernment, that you will give us wisdom, and that you will give us the power to shut off the noise of the enemy. And God, I pray that we will choose you instead of temptation every day. We will put aside the temptation and we will not pet it no longer. But we will choose you. And it's in your name we pray. Amen. Amen.